Hello and welcome to this Corgi Engine tutorial. I'm Renaud and today we are going to talk about managers in the Corgi Engine. So um, the Corgi Engine uses managers as central reference points for a lot of classes and components. These managers always present in your scene will remember the current points count, the sounds that are playing or where to spawn the character. There are a few of them and in most scenes you will have a game manager, a level, input and sound manager present at all time. Usually you want to place them on empty game objects, so uh, let's see how this works. Here I am in the Brobro demo scene and as you can see I have outside of my um, level I have this uh, invisible game objects. Uh, this one is the game manager's game object, it contains the game manager, sound manager and the achievement rules and then I have my level manager here and uh, lastly I have my input manager which is on the UI camera prefab. So uh, let's start with the, the game managers object. Uh, it contains a game manager script. Uh, the game manager is a high level manager that is responsible for setting the target frame rate so you can change it here. For example if I put 5 uh, and press play you'll see that uh, suddenly I'm at 5 FPS right here. Uh, usually uh, it's a good idea to put 300. Uh, not exactly sure why, it seems to be a uh, unity good practice. Uh, at least 300 on, on all devices. I think there's something on, on iPhone. I'll have to look that up. But uh, I think on iOS you, you want to put 300, otherwise you're stuck at uh, some really low value if you don't do that. Anyway, um, most of the time you won't have to interact with the game manager um, but you have to make sure there's one in, in the level uh, it will really uh, it's a high level manager and uh, if you want to know more you can you know just uh, look the look up the api documentation or just open the class and you'll see what it does uh, basically it has methods to add and uh, set points the time scale and it will uh, handle the pose uh, freezing the game then we have uh, the sound manager. The sound manager, as the name implies, is in charge of playing sounds in the Corgi engine. Uh, of course you can play them directly in your code using uh, Unity's native APIs, but using the sound manager will ensure that it's played using the same volume uh, for the music and the sound effects that you can set uh, separately here. Um, you can also, you know, uh, bind stuff. Uh, for example, you can have buttons on uh, the start of your game, saying that the music is on or off, and same thing for the SFX. And as long as you call uh, the sound manager's methods, uh, you will be just fine. Um, most abilities contain examples of that. Uh, I think the there are two methods you you need to know in the sound manager, uh, and these are play sound uh, which takes an audio clip and the location and whether or not you want to loop it uh, as parameters and play background music which you know as the <laughs> name implies plays a background music uh, if you want to find examples of how it's used you can just uh, right click and find references throughout the code base and uh, for example here we have I don't know this one uh, when when the weapon starts, so we are in the, the weapon script. Uh, we call some manager dot instance dot play sound um, the name of our public uh, audio source and the position, and it will just you know make bang or whatever your gun sound. Is. And then moving on, we have the achievement rules. Uh, these will be detailed in the achievements tutorial. Uh, I won't go into details here, but basically as you can imagine uh, this is just a manager that contains well, a script that contains uh, the achievement rules for this level uh, moving on we have uh, something else that is the loading screen manager uh, one way to show you that is to you know I'll just take a much smaller level because it will just take ages to get there uh, Take that one, and I'm gonna need to move my game screen here. So here we go. 
I'll just do this one first. So I reached the end of the level and as you could see there was this loading thing. Uh, this loading thing was actually the loading scene manager. The loading scene manager uh, is my replacement for Unity's default scene manager API. Uh, usually when you want to go to another scene uh, in a menu or to go from one level to the next for example, you'd use the scene manager API. It's something that's native and probably you'd use scene manager dot load scene method. Uh, the engine, the Corgi engine comes with its own scene change API uh, so that you uh, can do that with you know a loader and everything you're completely free not to use it if you don't like it uh, I think it's a method that does provide good visual feedback for the player and uh, scene loading on mobile for example can take a few seconds uh, so depending on the size of your own asset so just having a black screen sitting there isn't really uh, good looking if you want to, to provide a better experience you can of course uh, use that script so um, to use it it's really simple uh, for example here we have the finish level uh, script it's just a script that uh, uh, when you activate uh, the button it's button activated um, we'll go to the next level and to go to the next level it calls this loading scene manager load scene method uh, if you go to the loading scene manager you'll see that it has a bunch of stuff uh, a good way to uh, see how it works is to go into uh, common uh, loading screen so um, that's the screen that will uh, well the scene that will get called dynamically uh, while the other uh, scene loads and uh, here we find our loading scene manager and as you can see it's only really basic well it, it does some uh, complex stuff when it when it loads asynchronously the the next level but uh, in terms of GUI and um, what you can customize uh, it's really simple uh, it references a loading text uh, that we have here that you can change so let's say uh, hello tutorial and now my my text box is a little bit too small so I'm just gonna expand it uh, of course, I could change uh, the font to uh, to something like this one, and I could change uh, you know the font style depending on uh, whether or not my font will support it. Uh, you can change the font size to 16 maybe or to 10, so you see a change. Um, well, classic text stuff. Uh, the other things I can change are my uh, loading progress bar so uh, in this case that's this one uh, it's really a simple progress bar i could uh, decide that it's uh, much higher for example and um, i could decide to change the image that's on it uh, for example i could have yeah this this background here this background image would be perfectly ugly um, I can change uh, the loading animation so uh, in this case the loading animation is this small thing I'm not sure if it works if I press play here yeah so uh, as you can see I have a small sprite sheet here and um, that does the job and uh, it's really just a, an object with an animator so uh, you, you can you know put anything here the idea is that if you reference it uh, through uh, this as a loading animation it just has to be a canvas group uh, that way the system the, the loading scene manager will know it's the loading animation and will know when to show it and when to hide it and uh, the same goes for the loading complete animation uh, which in, in our case was this small uh, ball running thing uh, and that's pretty much it so uh, if you save your scene and I'm gonna do it right now uh, and then you go back to for example um, does, does the minimal slopes have an exit? No, it doesn't. Um, I'll just go back to the mountains. The mountains is my, my go-to scene when I want to finish a level really fast. And just do it again. I'm gonna uh, put the game view here. And uh, I used to do that much faster. And here we go. And as you can see, um, 
we well it went really fast but uh, you could see that we had the new animation bar and the new font and so on so it's really easy to customize you can change of course the uh, background color and stuff like that really simple and uh, so finally we have our input manager here as usual it sits on the UI camera prefab uh, the only reason for that is that most of the buttons and so on uh, reference the um, input manager so uh, uh, it's easier to have them all on the, at the same place they are the subject of a dedicated tutorial so um, yeah that, that's pretty much it about uh, the manager one last thing uh, you may want to do at some point is uh, to extend the manager so let's say you have uh, for example the game manager and you want to make it something else you want to uh, when you play when you press pause for example or when you add points uh, when you add points you want to do something else you want to uh, maybe I don't know uh, trigger fireworks and stuff like that so let's see how you could do that uh, so the first thing to do is to create a new script I'm gonna put it here because why not uh, obviously you'd want to put it somewhere else so I'm gonna call it uh, tutorial manager tutorial game manager yeah. tutorial game manager so um, I'm gonna open it and I'm gonna say uh, that it uses uses uh, more mountains that call the engine and it's not gonna be a mono behavior well it's gonna be one but uh, it's gonna extend game manager so um, when you extend the class uh, and I'm, I'm probably not the best um, code teacher out there but uh, I'd suggest you you follow uh, unity's tutorials on, on that subject but um, when you extend the class basically what you want to do is uh, have a look at the base class so in this case the game manager obviously you could just modify game manager and uh, you know say okay when I set points I don't want this thing to happen and I want instead to have this thing to happen whatever that is um, but if you do that uh, next time you update the project if I have made change to the game manager or if somebody else uh, you know modifies your project uh, you lose the changes so uh, it's always a good idea when you use uh, an external library like the Kogi engine to extend stuff and override the behaviors you don't like so um, I'm just gonna reset my changes here uh, so what we wanted to do was do something when we add points so we've uh, said that our tutorial game manager uh, extends game manager now what we want to do is modify uh, add points so I, I'm just gonna copy uh, that function that method and here I'm gonna say uh, public override void so I'm gonna override that behavior um, and inside I'm gonna do base that add points uh, and there I'm just gonna write points to add so that way this method right now does exactly the same thing as its parent class so uh, if I go back to my scene, uh, I select my game manager. Obviously, as I'm creating a new one, I don't want the old one in the scene, so I'm just going to remove it. And I'm going to add a component, and I'm going to call it tutorial game manager. Um, as you can see, as I extend the game manager, I already have a bunch of stuff like the target frame rate. It's actually, at this point, uh, only a game manager. So if I press play, uh, you'll see that I don't have any error my game runs as it should and if I uh, jump and press escape well you don't see but I do uh, my game screen uh, if I jump and pause uh, that's something that the base game manager does it's still working um, so so far we are good to go um, now let's say I want to do something when we add points uh, one way well let, let's do something really simple uh, I'm gonna add something called uh, using 
are mountain tools. So mountain tools are a library of uh, well, is a library of helpers and methods that I use throughout all my projects, um, and that you're free to use if you want to. Uh, it contains stuff like uh, debug lock time or debug on screen um, helpers that I, I use uh, most of the time when I'm coding. Uh, so let's write something like a new game manager add points. So uh, what this does is every time the game manager will add points to itself, um, maybe because I've picked up a coin or stuff like that or killed an enemy, uh, it will do what it used to do, so add points and save them or whatever it does, and uh, it will also display uh, a debug message. So let's give it a try. And here we go. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to try to find coin. So uh, let's see what happens when I grab that coin. As you can see here, uh, it, it works. So uh, I've successfully extended a component, um, in this case a manager, and that's that's really all there is to it. Uh, and and from there, all you have to do is uh, you know maybe uh, you want to do something when you extend, uh, you, you want to override what happens when you set the time scale. Uh, this is typically called when you set a pose, uh, but you can also uh, modify the pose function. You can also do stuff like, um, uh, okay, when I add points, I want to trigger fireworks. So uh, maybe you'll have a dedicated class for that, or maybe you'll do it in your special game manager. Uh, but you could have something like this, trigger fireworks, where you do stuff here, and uh, every time, every time you grab points, you'd call trigger fireworks um, and here you could do much more so that's really a way to extend the engine that's really a way um, to create new stuff uh, on top of what's already there um, that covers everything I had to say about managers I hope you learned something new today uh, see you next time bye